This week on C Plus News Time, too many project stars are doing their own project together. I promise that wasn't a sex joke. CISO announced premieres for shows new and old, and a host of late nighters will be going live before and after the election results go in tomorrow. Prepare for trouble, make it double. No matter who wins tomorrow, the terrible Team Rocket is surely going to bring that much sought after devastation they've been promising. Our nation's people certainly won't be united, and truth and love will not be denounced. Extend your reach to the stars above, viewers, because we're about to blast off at the speed of light. Surrender to C-plus news time now, or prepare to fight. That's right. It's C-plus news time. Delivering to you the news you didn't know about, the news you didn't care about, and the news you didn't know you cared about. With host, Chad White. Now... Here's that host, Chad White. If you had to describe me in five words or less, what would you say? Suave, devilishly handsome, totally not gay? Welcome back to C Plus News Time. I'm your host, Chad White, and this is the comedy news they didn't know about for the week of October 31st, 2016. Buckle in, guys. This is going to be a long one. First up, the Mindy Project co-stars Ed Weeks and titular Mindy herself have teamed up for a comedy series on ABC. The script comes from Weeks himself, the British doctor on the now Hulu-based series, and Hannah McKay, a producer of Peep Show. The story centers on liberal lesbian couple Laurel and Marissa as they move to the former's conservative Kansas hometown with their teenage son. Weeks, McKay, Kaling, and Universal TV are producing. This marks Kaling's second commitment with the studio studio to whom she sold another single camera put pilot committed series that will air on NBC sometime next year. Next up, speaking of NBC, its streaming platform CISO announced a slew of comedy shows slated for the first third of 2017. January will see the second season of the UCB show, the premiere of Fancy Boy, a six part sketch series with varying degrees of moods, and Wham Bam Thank You Ma'am, a sketch series from the all female sketch sketch group Skitbox. February has the third season of webcomic turned web TV show Side Night and Happiness and My Brother, My Brother and Me, which comes from the Pseudo Advice podcast. Along with those shows, there will be more stand-up specials from Adam Newman on January 26th, Nick DiPaolo on February 16th, Fahim Anwar on March 9th, and Sashir Zameda on March 30th. On top of that, two specials will debut before Christmas. Alan Partridge's Scissored Isle on November 17th, and Andy Richter's Home for the holidays on December 20th. Fans of comedy should really give CISO a try. It's $4 a month, and it's the only place to get every episode of SNL and all that alternative comedy you so crave. And finally, as much as I tried to escape writing a story about this election, which I did exceptionally well, given that I work in the news in my real life, it hurts a little bit to have this, a story about said topic just a single day before all of this shit is over with. But it relates to comedy, so hear me out. Late night hosts are set to go live after the results of the election. Either Giant Douche or Turd Sandwich will be the America's Next President, which would be a great NBC competition series. And our funniest white men are set to comment on all of it live. Stephen Colbert is doing it the biggest with shows before, after, and on the day our nation stood still. Today and Wednesday, Colbert will be live hosting the late show from Ed Sullivan Theater as per usual. On the actual night of elections, however, the host is going to showtime for one night only with what he's calling Stephen Colbert's live election night democracies series finale. Who's going to clean up this shit? You see, he can say shit because the special is on showtime and cursing is legal there. And so are boobs. This deal can only be done because CBS News, as with every other news outlet, will be doing election night coverage. But viewers of the pay cable network will see Colbert's reactions in real time as results are turned in state by state. Deadline says that telecasting on Showtime will allow, on top of the cursing and my proposed boobs idea, the host to say other things that other news outlets wouldn't be able to say, such as directly quoting a candidate, which he could never do on CBS. Colbert has been killing it lately as a live host, having tackled the three presidential debates, the vice presidential debate, and both national conventions. Ratings for his final debate coverage counted 3.8 million viewers, and trust me, for a 
late night show, that's pretty damn good. But Colbert isn't the only host to do the live thing this year. Actually, 2016 and this new crop of hosts alone proved that late night needed a change, even if it's still overrun by a bunch of white dudes. NBC late night host Seth Meyers had a live episode after the first presidential debate. During this episode, the host used his now hallmark segment, A Closer Look, to set a scene and even throw in a fact check or two. For the past few months, Myers has angled his tenure at late night to be fairly more political than its past incarnations, but he sort of has to do that now. Indie Wire writer Steve Green complimented Myers' work on the post-first debate live episode, but he also noted that, at least from July to September, the top five most watched videos on the late night YouTube page have been giant douche themed A Closer Look segments. And yes, it's true. All of this coverage, both negative and super negative, of giant douche has put the focus primarily on him, leaving Turd Sandwich getting noticed only by proxy. But at least she didn't get her hair tussled on the Tonight Show. Jimmy Kimmel's live actually went live after the third debate. What's more is that he nabbed guests like Gary Johnson, horrible porn commenter Ken Bone, and even Fast X Fast and Furious Wonder Woman Gal Gadot. Kimmel has always been a lone wolf, especially since his network doesn't supply him with a companion show like CBS and NBC. But he really doesn't need a follow-up given how much he's covered the election on his own. Back in May, he got Bernie Sanders to challenge Giant Douche to a debate. He got a bunch of kids to give their honest opinions about the candidates, and he even got Chile's president, Barry O, to read some mean tweets. Uh, hey jerks, upon editing this here video, I realized that I left out Samantha B. She's been doing some solid work over at TBS on her show Full Frontal with Samantha B. She's been averaging about 800 to about 900,000 viewers per episode, and she's been doing really well, getting a point three in the demo, and also she's going to be doing some election stuff too. On Monday, she's doing an episode where she went to Moscow to talk about how she's not moving the show there. And on Wednesday, after the election, she's going to be doing a post-election episode, which will surely be one of the best things that ever happened to Late Night in the past few months. Okay, sorry about that, Samantha B. I love you. Bye. Not to be left out of the fun, Comedy Central's current Late Night shows will also jump on the live bandwagon. The Daily Show and At Midnight will air post-results the night of. The Daily Show will do an hour-long episode starting at its regular time, while at midnight we'll have its first ever live episode with hilarious people Whitney Cummings, Ron Funches, and Paul F. Tompkins. Noah's work on the current iteration of The Daily Show has been going under the radar unless you're a regular viewer. If you jump ship because your precious Jon Stewart left, you're pretty much missing out. The South Africans host segments about the election have been consistently done well. Well, plus, he took a look at the media's coverage of the election, something that no other host has even dedicated a joke to. Earlier this summer, for the national conventions, The Daily Show aired two different specials and shot two weeks' worth of shows from both Philly and Cleveland. Along with that, Comedy Central will air a Tosh.0 election special, if that's what gets you going, a politics-based drunk history best of, and a South Park marathon dubbed Make America MK Again. There is no telling what Matt Stone and Trey Parker have for the following night's episode, though. I'm sure it'll be just as surprising and worked on until the last minute as 2008's About Last Night and 2012's Obama Wins. Not only will those late night shows be live and or a marathon, Chris Gethard, yes, the guy with the Fusion slash Facebook Live TV show, will host a 12-hour public access election coverage special. You heard that right. The improv comedian is going back to his roots, but you have to live in New York to see it. Viewers of the Manhattan Neighborhood Network will get a huge dose of Gethard and his band of misfits from noon until midnight. He originally did the same thing for the 2012 election. Plus, a gaggle of comedians will stop by for the fun, including Joe Firestone, Shannon O'Neill, and way too many to count. Besides the news, Late Night is the only other place suited to tackle such a toxic bit of topics like politics. Twitter is overrun by people who think they're funny but aren't. Reddit has a bunch of circle jerks.
works and not even I know what's really even going on but everyone has a voice and you can't run from that even shows like Broad City took it upon themselves to center entire episodes on the election it's been a wacky year and it's about time we got this mess over with then we can get back to the real news like who wore it best and BuzzFeed God I hate this stupid stupid earth and that's all the news I have for you for this week on C Plus News Time. Why don't you subscribe and check out one of our videos? Of course, you can always head to the website cpluscomedy.com where we've got the latest news, reviews, features, interviews, and other good comedy bits that only I can provide you with. Follow us on Twitter at C Plus Comedy. Follow me on Twitter at Chad Black White. Like us on Facebook. Tumble with us on Tumblr. And be sure to get out there and vote. Or Diddy will come up there and kill you because he likes to make sure you die. So vote or die because he's Diddy Dirty Money. He'll do you dirty with his money. Okay, bye.